Hi everybody, I am Dr. Harita. Today I am going to explain you uh, one of the very obsolete sorting technique that is called as bubble sort. So, what is bubble sort and what do you, what do you mean by sorting initially? What do you mean by sorting? Sorting is nothing but arranging values, arranging values in order, that is all. If you want to sort something, well, how will you do? If you want to sort integer numbers, how will you do? You arrange them in order, ascending, either ascending or descending orders. For that, you have hundreds of sorting techniques available in the literature. So, one among us, this is the first sorting technique we are introducing to you all and this is very obsolete, which consumes a quadratic amount of time and which deteriorates its performance if the input is arising. If the input is increasing, its performance decreases. It's the input size with bubbles at uh, both the input and performance are inversely proportional. But of course, for some small volumes of data, it competes equally with well known sorting techniques also, renowned sorting techniques whose time complexity is considerably good. Right. Therefore, let us explain what is your bubble sort. Right. What is the basic principle for all sorting techniques? Each sorting, why you should have these many sorting techniques? Each one is distinguished with their own individual procedure. Each one has their own unique procedure and their own time and space consumptions. There are few sorting techniques uh, that have the same consumption capacities in terms of time and space. Then you may wonder why I require these many with the same capacities, same performance. We cannot say that in that case we cannot say that this is only suitable, this is good and this is not bad. Even your bubble chart performs good for small volumes of input when compared with your quick sort which is renowned to be more efficient one. That is why it is you to decide based on your application you have to choose among the available sorting techniques. You have plenty of uh, options in terms of sorting techniques and based on your application it is uh, you, uh, we have uh, flexibility is there to choose whatever you want, right. So, for that purpose let us try to understand what are the available sorting techniques and what is their processor and we start with uh, bubble sort. You may wonder what is the name bubble, is it an air bubble or water bubble? It is a data bubble. Suppose, if I ask you to start an integer array of 5 elements, arrange in ascending order. Therefore, I always have first smallest, second, third and fourth, fifth is the largest value, okay. So, in bubble chart your data that is your number largest numbers will be bubbled towards the end of the list. That is why it is called as a bubble chart and smallest values are bubbled towards the beginning of the list after every iteration. It is not going to complete it in a single iteration or pass. We will call it as, see we will give you one procedure and that procedure will be repeated n number of times, right. Each iteration we call it as one pass. Therefore, we have n passes to complete the algorithm and to get the final sorted list. And what is the basic principle here is always the adjacent elements are going to be compared, always the adjacent elements are going to be compared. always the adjacent elements are going to be compared. 
Yes. So, see here you start from the beginning of the array, what are the adjacent elements here? 4 and 1, compare 4 and 1, if they are not in order, normally I call this pair as inversion. What do you mean by inversion? I call this pair as inversion. What do you mean by inversion students? Inversion is, suppose you have a pair of values, see here 4 and 1. If 4 is greater than 1 and their positions, let us assume the first value position is i and second value position is j. If i is less than j and a of i is greater than a of j, therefore it is an inversion pair. They are not in order. Informally, if any pair is not in order, then it is called as inversion. Compare always the adjacent elements and swap, only that is the principle here for bubble sort. Compare adjacent elements, if they are not in order, swap, compare, swap, compare, swap, compare, swap. That is the process you have to proceed. So, here 4 and 1, they are not in order, swap. Next to two adjacent elements are 4 and 5, they are in order. Next two adjacent elements are 5 and 3, yes, they are in order. Next two elements are 3 and 2, are they in order? No, then swap 2, 3. Right? 5, 3, are they in order? See, let us start with first 4, 1, not in order, swap 1, 4. Second table shows you this. And here you have to compare 4 and 5, are they in order? Yes, so retain it. Next adjacent pair 5 and 3, are they in order? No, swap that is 3 and 5. Next adjacent pair 5 and 2, are they in order? No, then swap it to be 2, 5. Do you have any more adjacent pairs? No, after swapping 2, 5, do you have any adjacent pairs? No. So, this is the result of your array after first pass, result of your array after first pass. Any doubts? All right. Do you understand what your bubble chart is? So these are few reference links for you and you can check this with this. Yeah, all right. Yes, and my pen stuck, sorry for the inconvenience and let me explain with an example here, yeah, all right. Take out your own example, old example, I will explain you with the same example, this one, 4, 1, 5, 3, 2. Let me take a place, yeah, 4, 1, 5, 3, 2. So, compare the adjacent elements, are they in order? Yes or no? No, therefore, swap 1, 4, 5, 3, 2. Now, what are the adjacent elements? 4 and 5, compare, yes, they are in order, no need to swap. Next, what are the adjacent elements? 3 and 5, are they in order? No, then swap. What is swapping? Reversing the positions. 5, 3 will become 3, 5, 2. Next, what are the adjacent elements? 5, 1, 2. Are they in order? No, then swap. Swapping means rearranging their positions. 1, 4, 3, 2, 5. So, after the, now, do you have any more pair of values to be compared? No, that is how you reach the, uh, the end of one iteration or 
one pass. This is the result after your first pass and you have to repeat this n times. So, therefore, how many passes for this example you have 5 passes since the input is size is 5 you have to perform 5 times even though sometimes your array gets sorted in between you have to perform 5 times the same process first pass is done. Once again in second pass you have to start with the beginning compare adjacent elements 1, 4 they are in order. 4, 3, they are not in order, therefore swap 1, 3, 4, 2, 5, 4, 2, they are not in order, swap 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 4, 5, yes they are in order and you are left with no more pairs. Therefore, at the end of second pass, this is your output. Once again you perform the input to the third pass is this and the input to the second pass is this. Every time changes partially sorted array will be thrown given as input to the next process in the sequence. Now once again start your comparison they are in order but these two are not in order therefore swap. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, next 3, 4 in order, 4, 5 in order, yes. So, by the time of second pass only your entire array gets sorted, but you need to run 5 passes. You have to repeat this process again and again, do you understand? Yes or no, always compare the adjacent elements until you reach the end of the array. If they are not in order swap, once you reach the end of the array, the process will be repeated once again until you complete n passes, where n is always input size, where n is always input size. Make sense? Yes, right? Now you can see this, these examples and uh, right, explore it, right. First see the first example, so what is the input size here? 7, n is equal to 7, means you need to run 7 passes. First pass, are they in order? No, 45, 92, 92, 89, are they in order? No. Therefore, what I have to write 45, 89, 92, minus 2, are they in order? No, 45, 89, minus 2, 92. Next what is the input? 58, are they in order? No, therefore 45, 89, minus 2, 58 and then 92, 55, are they in order? No, swap 55, 92. Next minus 5, so compare. So finally, after first pass 45, 89, minus 2, 58, 9, 55 and then minus 5 and 92. So if you observe student, this is the end of the first pass and the largest value bubbled towards the end of the array. Understood? largest value bubbled towards the end of the array. This is after first pass, after second pass second largest will be placed here, after third pass third largest will be placed here and so on. That is why your inner loop always runs up to n minus i minus 1 times. I would like to uh, write the function of your bubble chart here. See, let us suppose you can write a void bubble sort your array integer a comma int size is n, right? 
So, two passes, two loops you have to write since it is performing the same process n times. So, outer loop will give you the number of passes int i is equal to 0 i less than n minus 1 i plus plus ok. And then what is inner loop? Uh, inner loop your, your actual loop j is equal to 0 j less than n minus i minus 1 j plus plus. And you have to compare the adjacent elements. How can you compare a of j is greater than a of j plus 1 inversion. You have to swap a of j comma a of j plus 1. That is all. Very simple. Only the condition compare the adjacent elements j and j plus 1. If they are not in order that is the first value is greater than the second value by position. Therefore, swap those two values. Repeat this starting from the first value to this value. Initially when i is 0 starting from first to last. Why this is n minus i minus 1? Every time this i values are getting sorted. Initially i is 0 means all elements will participate. When i becomes 1 means second pass. Second pass first value first largest will be placed at last. No need to swap your 92. Your 92 is at the end of the list. It was placed, it was placed in its permanent place in the final sorted list. See here this 92. For second pass this 92 must not participate. That is why every time I am excluding i minus values from the input list that are going to be compared. Understood? Yes. And the time complexity and all will be explored in your next courses, right? And also explore these self-assessment questions. And uh, for further uh, references, you have this, you have a look at these books and web links. Thank you, thank you very much.